You're listening to What She Said, a podcast for bloggers and creatives hosted by me, Lucy Sharif, a freelance journalist living in London. Each week, I interview different women in blogging and the online world, getting their best blogging tips and advice, and a little bit of gossip too. Thanks for listening. Welcome to episode three of the What She Said podcast. I'm so excited to be back. It's so, so much fun and I'm, I'm super happy. Um, it's I can't even believe it's 2018 and my daughter is going to be one this year. It's nuts. Anyway, ramble aside. <laughs> um, today's episode, I'm chatting to Helen Redfern of the, A Bookish Baker. Um, she is a writer, a photographer, she creates beautiful videos, and she's writing a novel, which is insane. I'm so impressed. We chatted all about her process, um, how she stays motivated to write, how she creates such incredible videos, and we talked really about the techni- technical side of creating those 15-second clips with music and um, kind of editing them in iMovie and uploading them to um, Instagram. Um And I really hope you enjoy it because I loved chatting to Helen. She's such an interesting soul. She's really, really experienced in blogging, and but she's so generous with her knowledge. She's so super honest. Um, We talk about all the, you know, all the stumbling blocks that people have when they had started blogging a long time ago and have various different iterations of their blog. And I think it'll be a really useful one. So enjoy the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, do you want to get started by just introducing yourself and telling us about your blogging journey for anyone that doesn't know who you are? Okay, so I have been blogging for, and I was trying to work this out earlier, I think it might be 11 years. Oh my so I started in, what, 2006? It might have been the year before that. Um, so I've been online for a long time in various formats. Um, what was the initial I'm, blog about? The initial one was I had read a novel by an author called Kate Harrison. And as I did at that time, my son was a few years old. Um, so I was reading a lot and I was writing as a form of, well, as a way of escaping being the parent and I had postnatal depression as well, Mm -hmm. so I was writing, but I was writing a novel, but I was writing the same three chapters, you know, (laughs) rewriting them constantly. So um, I read this novel by Kate Harrison, and um, I Googled her. I don't think it was Google at the time, but I, I researched her online, and she had a blog, which is the first time I'd come across a blog, and on it she was asking for other writers to join her in a word race is basically a a race to write your first draft because the idea is that you write your first draft as quickly as possible and then it's all about the story gets better and better Mm -hmm. as you edit it is that kind of like a NaNoWriMo sort of I guess so yeah but it gives you longer than the 30 days of November um but yeah basically you get it all out of your your head onto the um onto the laptop and yeah that's how how it all started so I emailed Kate and Kate said well it'd be great if you joined us but um it'd be good if you had a blog and then you can share your word count for that day and everybody can check up on you i mean this is before the days of twitter and facebook oh, sure. so this is how we all communicated so it's so, like accountability yes kind of partners basically yes. having your blog yeah yeah exactly that and you know sometimes you'd have a tough day sometimes you'd have a good day and you'd get cheered on by the other writers um or you know commiserated but (laughs) (laughs) um yeah that went on um during that year I think I think that was 2006 and then um I wasn't the first to finish the my first draft the first draft but I was I did finish my first draft um 
which was an incredible achievement yeah. when you consider I had been writing and rewriting three chapters constantly for the past year or whatever it was. Yeah. So um, it really gave me that impetus to 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 get it done. Um, and then from that, I was aware of the blogging world. I mean, as young as it was at the time. And I got to know other people, other writers online. Um, and then I started writing for a book website called Trashinista. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote about a, a, a weekly column called Helen's Heroines, where, you know, I, I think I wrote about Daryl from Mallory Towers. Oh, and, my God. Uh, she was like my spirit, spirit <laughs> yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, people like that. I think um, I'm trying to think of some others, but it's all gone now. But <laughs> from that, <clears throat> I set up my own blog. And oh, my goodness, the, the amount of blogs I've had over the last 11 years, you know, whether I was called Red as Ramblings, I think I was right at the beginning. And then, oh, so other things I've had um, Hen Orchard. When I moved here, I've had Helen Redfern in various dot coms and dot so when, did, when did you become a bookish baker, which is what you are today? Last year. Ah, so it is very new. I thought it was. I knew. I knew it was new, but I didn't know it was quite yeah. so new because I. Uh, I guess I because I know you from Instagram mm-hmm. and I know you as being a very experienced writer and all the rest of it. That's interesting. So. Yeah. My first question, I guess, is why so many iterations? Why didn't you just stay with the? <laughs> <laughs> I think, and again, I was thinking about this earlier. I think I was constantly looking for my niche. Right. So I was in the beginning when we were just sharing word counts. I was a writer, even though I didn't call myself that because yeah. of the things that go with that. But, um, that that I had my niche and then when we I suppose when it it got bigger than that and then I thought well what shall I write about oh yeah that's right I used to write about cakes as well so I thought well am I going to write about cakes am I going to write about books am I going to write about chickens that's a more recent one um from the past five years what is it that I'm going to write about and um for a while I wrote about food in books and I did that on another website called Novelicious um and some it it never felt like me I always felt constricted yeah um I think that's really, really interesting because mm -hmm. I think there are so many of us out here in the blogosphere who find, and niche is something that I definitely want to talk to you about because you wrote a brilliant post about Mm -hmm. it, um, and we talk about it a lot on the podcast, and I think I was, I was chatting to Monica Stott, um, just this morning, who's coming back for series two as well, and she, I was saying to her, you know, I I don't know. I feel like I've become known for being a rebel against niche. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of I I don't feel that I am necessarily a rebel against it because I I do believe in the power of having a niche. The reason I believe in the power of having a niche and I I'd be interested to hear your opinions on this is I don't believe in niche in, in the way that some people teach it, which mm. is that you have to be a mm. something. Yeah. But I think when cause the nature of being a creative is that you're often quite scattered. Yeah. And for me, um, I need to feel like I need to have some boundaries to my... I, I, I agree. And I think otherwise it can get overwhelming yes. as well because yes, you exactly. think, well, I can write about anything mm. and anything is well it's infinite isn't it you know you need some kind of barriers there so in order for you to get those words down in the first place but at the same time you don't want to have those barriers there that are stopping you from doing what you know from writing I mean as an example I didn't know I was going to write and create the Instagram account that I've got and write about the things that I do um, 11 years ago when I first started blogging. If I had said at the time, 
oh, I'm going to be a parent blogger or I'm going to be a book blogger or any of these different categories, it would have stopped me from experimenting creatively. And I think for 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 those people who want to start blogs and for the, for the love of writing or for the love of photography or anything like that and they are getting stuck with this mm. you know you've got to have a niche then it can be that it will stop them creatively because you know in 5 years time they could be writing about something they'd never imagined would be there and i think that yeah I, I completely I, agree. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I think that a niche can be a help and a hindrance. It can. I think, I think it really is about mindset, isn't it? It is. And it should never stop you. It should mm. never hold you back. But having having a bit of, um, I don't know, a kind of self-curation tool yeah. can be quite helpful. Yeah, it can. Stop you from getting overwhelmed. It can. So I wanted to talk to you a bit about um, Instagram. Yes. Because you have an awesome Instagram account and you've written about you. how you've grown it massively over the past year. Um, and some of the, st- and you're so creative. Some of the stuff that you're doing is, um, things that I don't see anybody else doing. Um, you're really original and you don't really follow any, you're so different. Mm. Um, what, why, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why why and how? <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of my, um, I think bloody mindedless mm. in that I think, and I say this to my daughter a lot, never be a sheep. Um, I mean, she's, she's nine now and you know how girls are at that age and they always sort of follow one another. And, and I, I think I'm trying to, I'm, tr- I'm learning from my daughter. So I'm thinking, well, it's so easy to compare yourself with other people and t- to try and replicate what they're doing, but, um is it what you actually want to do and i mean crikey you say that i'm so creative and do you know i never thought of myself as being a creative person at all yeah um i baked cakes and i used to decorate them in that sort of um you know i used to make a ladybird or or things like that from them but and that was the only way that i thought i was creative so isn't that interesting? I think, I think that comes from school, though, because mm-hmm. I didn't see my... I Only this year, really, maybe this year, last year, started to think, oh, yeah, I am actually quite creative because mm-hmm. in my head, creativity meant I had to be good at art or good at photography or good at something, yeah. I don't know, something that is a bit more tangibly creative, as it were. Because exactly. at school, you're either creative or you're not creative, right? Mm-hmm. So mm. either, and I was I was pretty good at maths and science. I was also I also loved art and I liked English. Um, so so you know, it's it's yeah. school. I think that screws you over. Yeah, I agree. I and I had no clear path. I mean, I went on to university and did business. I didn't do English or anything like that, and I never knew I wanted to be a writer until my twenties. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, um, what was your original question? Something about Instagram. I've gone off on yeah. a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking about, um, you know, the, the awesome, like, mini videos that you do. I was, it was kind of a bit of a rambling question, but really I wanted to lead you into how you create so differently. Like, where do you get the inspiration from? I know, like, your chickens and your life and everything is a big inspiration to you. And you do these really beautiful mini videos, which are also on YouTube as well, aren't they? Yes. Yes, I do a compilation on YouTube. Otherwise, with Instagram stories, they're gone in 24 hours. And I think you put so much work into them that it would be a shame. So I like to look back on them. And and I've got them at the moment sort of dotted in various places on my laptop. And and I'm thinking, well, if I had them all there, all my favourite bits, then they're there. And and every now and again, I'll look back and and see how much I've changed, say, creatively, but also how the seasons vary because a lot of it's all outside Mm. um so in terms of where i get my inspiration from a lot of it will be seasonal and um was it yesterday or the day before i woke up and it was 
it was just a normal sort of overcast day but as the morning went on it got really foggy and I thought right I've got to go outside and take my phone with me and record the ducks out in the fog because I don't think that I've had fog yet to re- to do an Instagram story on so that's how I get my inspiration but also it's it's sort of I walk round I mean I'm very lucky with um what I've got outside and the trees and the bit of land we've got and everything like that but I I walk round and it could be that I've noticed the first snowdrops come up or the first leaf has dropped down or anything like that and it it kind of sticks in my head a bit I think um I remember I did a, a a YouTube video about my Instagram inspiration and one of the examples I gave there was the chives that were was at the top of these steps that I've got as I go out in the garden and every day I went past there was seemingly hundreds of bees buzzing around um and it was fascinating to watch but that stuck in my head and I thought well it's I wanted to tell that story of how um I was noticing them and the colours and the noise that was coming with it and everything like that and and I think this is the beauty of Instagram stories in that it gives you a different way of telling a story mm-hmm. and I should stay, say at this stage that the word telling the sto- or the phrase telling the story it never even occurred to me I said saying that a lot I mean, I've had a bit of a revelation over the past few years but it hadn't occurred to me that telling these small stories um about nature or about the ducks or the chickens or whatever it is are actually interesting to other people <laughs> isn't it funny when we realize yeah. that we are actually quite interesting people yeah <laughs> and in effect, sometimes not a lot is happening mm. out there but you can always you, you it, you you notice very small things which are seemingly insignificant and maybe if you were busy or or rushing about your day you may have missed them but just a little bit of slowing down and opening your eyes or or, or, or your smell or 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 what you can hear and um you get a, a little snippet of um dialogue or, or or phrasing or something comes in your head and you think well I'm, I must write that down or you whip out your camera phone and you record it and I do think that Instagram stories Instagram and Instagram stories have been incredibly beneficial for me as a writer mm-hmm. because it is making me focus on smaller things mm-hmm. and what's around you what's around yeah. me and it helps um, because I'm writing a novel as well. Mm. So it helps when I'm writing. I, I find it so difficult to kind of get down to the detail when I'm writing a novel and I tend to rush through and I forget to describe where she's sitting or what, you know, what's around her at the time. Mm-hmm. So doing the Instagram stories and Instagram has helped me to set the scene if that makes sense yeah totally but that's interesting Um, isn't it you wouldn't necessarily immediately think of instagram stories as a way of um as being a really good writing tool actually Mm. but it but yeah you're right it is because we're such visual people aren't we and it's so easy to get to end up sat in your you know your head in your words can't see wood for the trees but actually like i'm the same as you when i'm writing I've you know obviously never written a novel or anything like that but when even when I'm writing travel pieces I find it quite hard sometimes to pull myself back and be like actually you haven't set the scene at all exactly when you go back to the pictures or you go back to your videos or whatever Mm -hmm. that can really help so I wanted to ask you a bit about kind of practicality of filming and how you because you you do you I think it was only yesterday or the day before that you said about um you use an app for your instagram stories and it's really cheap yes yes well in the past i have been using well what i do i always i've got an iphone 6s plus Mm -hmm. so that's that's where i'm starting from um and i will basically just have it in my hand as i'm walking the dog or walking out the back door and i just literally hold my phone up i might be turning the key in the lock um i might be tripod 
because no. you don't have much um, handshake at all. Oh, that depends how much coffee I've had, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, a lot of the time I do, I do have, um, because I've done it on my uh, vlogging camera mm. as well. I've got one of those small tripod handheld thingies. Oh, like the Gorilla that, tripod. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I have used them in the past, but yes, a lot. Or saying that, I will prop, <laughs> I will prop my phone up on the floor. So if I'm opening the hatch for the ducks to come mm. out, for example, um, I may prop my phone up by their exit. Right. So, so you get them. Um, so I get them, yeah. and they, yeah, that's when I wouldn't be holding it, so you wouldn't get the shake. But but that's simple, isn't it? You wouldn't mm. think that it was because they look really professional. <laughs> well, they are really Thank professional. You. They look they look incredible. Well, yeah, all it is most of the time it's with my iPhone. I've done two with my vlogging camera, um, just as an experiment, mm-hmm. um, and then I airdrop them to my Mac. Um, and put them into iMovie and then I edit them like that um, and it's got to a point now where for a 15 second clip it can take me about half an hour or even a 30 second one that's how fast I've got it now that's, because I think that is with, quick. yeah with Instagram stories even though you want it to look good you have to remember that it's still all in the moment so i don't want it to be always i don't want it to be perfect i still want it to be just recording the moments from that morning um every time i do it it's always from that morning or that day or whatever um and then i'll sit with my morning coffee when the children have gone to school i'll sit with my morning coffee and instead of scrolling through twitter or facebook which you can end up doing for you know for a good hour or whatever i will sit and do that and that's my first creative thing of the day and I it set that. me up then for the day i love yeah. that that's such a nice thing to do because yeah mm-hmm. oh my god i get so sucked into oh i used oh. to and it used to get me really down and yeah. i think it can it can suck all the sort of emotional energy out of you and totally. then you've got nothing left for creativity yeah. but if you start the day with something creative um then the day can only go up i think no i completely agree with you that's a really 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 good tip in fact i'm literally thinking right tomorrow what am i going to do first thing mm-hmm. to kind of set me up because this morning before my first call which was at nine was it at ten mm-hmm. um i had some coffee dealt with squarespace did some like (laughs) did some passive aggressive tweeting yes caught up with my facebook group and then and then i wasn't necessarily in the best frame of mind for the rest of the day yeah yeah i i i I do find i'm very susceptible i think because on twitter as well you're very susceptible to other people's moods Mm. and stuff like that and it, it, it it can affect you from a creative point of view but from other points of view as well so yes I d- and I'm not perfect. I don't always do this. I should. <laughs> I hasten to add, but I, <laughs> I was going to say I saw you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, I've been there. Um, but yeah, I, on most mornings, um, that's what I like to do. And um, yeah, and then, like I say, I'll upload it. And um, yeah, so it goes from my phone to my laptop, and then I'll chop it up into fifteen second. Um, sections because otherwise Instagram cuts it off. Yeah. Um, and so you chop it up yourself. I you? chop it. Yeah. You can get apps that will do that for you, but I think they cost a few pounds. Yeah, so I've seen those. Yeah, I thought, well, I can do that myself, and and it's very easy. And I'm getting quite the eye now for just going right. That's 15 seconds. God and doing it that it's way it's practice isn't it it's just one it of those is. new skills exactly i mean the first time i did it it took me a few hours yeah but um as i'm doing it the more i do it obviously the less it takes yeah. um and then i'll put some music to it and which i do from soundstripe mm-hmm. um that's that one like of the things free yeah i i pay a monthly subscription uh-huh. um it's one of the things that i pay for mm-hmm. besides squarespace um for my um online work yeah. and i thought as i'm going to do so many of these many films that it would be a good investment otherwise i'd be scrabbling around well that's it yeah the the pound per video will be low yes 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 exactly um so yeah and then i just um airdrop it back to my phone and then it goes up to instagram and it can take 
a while to upload because of my Wi-Fi. And, <laughs> <laughs> but when if I'm doing, say, uh, two or three 15-second um, uh, sections and the second one's taken ages to upload, I'm getting all impatient thinking, oh, everyone's going to see the first one, but they're going to think there isn't a second bit or a third bit and they're going to go. So, it's so yes. It's the perils it's, of Instagram stories, it is, isn't it? When it something is. uploads in the wrong order, it drives me <laughs> mad. But I'm like, oh. You have to be careful that that doesn't happen as well. Oh, God. Otherwise, your story will be back to front. It is so annoying, isn't it? And then you have to film more. <laughs> just yeah. To tell everybody yeah. about oh. <laughs> The perils of Instagram stories. Yeah. So, um, taking it back to writing, um, yes. how, so talking about kind of creativity, I guess, and, you know, you're writing a novel as well as writing your blog and doing all of the amazing stuff that you're doing on Instagram. I mean, I know, I know the answer to this, but do you ever get writer's block? Um, I get that, um, I don't know if it's writer's block, but I do get a lot of, um, I don't think I can do this yeah. um, feeling. I, You know, like I say, I've been doing this now for 11 years and I know I've had a second child within that 11 years as well But um, and we've moved house to the country and changed a life and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of the time there has been a big um, fear of failure, fear of success, all these different things you know massive confidence issues with my writing um so yes there are times when i don't look at my novel for ages um because i don't think i can do it and sometimes i get distracted um by my blog or these other things instead of do it writing my novel but like i say if i hadn't done all these other things it wouldn't have helped me with my writing so you know, I think this is the journey I'm supposed to have taken. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really good thing to remember, though, because I I hear a lot. Oh, if only. So this is. Uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I've been on Instagram since 2011, a long, long, long time. Mm-hmm. And I only really started taking it seriously in January this year. This year, yeah. And sometimes I think, oh my god, and I've I've tripled my followers in that time because i did sarah's course and because i took it seriously and because yeah. things just clicked and i think oh my god what if i'd have started back in 2011 taking it seriously i would have tens of thousands of followers now um, and yeah. but that's that's not like what's the point that's futile and also yeah. that, it doesn't make sense because sarah hadn't started her courses then no <laughs> so it would no. have been impossible for me to that that is my journey my journey is my journey yeah and I would never have got to where I am today if it hadn't have been for those initial blogs, for blogging about travel, for going traveling, yeah. for not taking certain things seriously, for ending up it, you know, working in a job that I didn't like or X, Y, Z. And I hear so often people saying, oh, I've been blogging for 10, 11, 12, 13 years in some iteration, mm. maybe less than that, whatever, maybe more if i'd have taken it seriously from the start (laughs) but but that's not (laughs) it's not possible for us to think like that no no and and the the thing is i had other things going on in my life at the time as well and and I, i sometimes think that maybe if this had all happened a few years ago i mean my blog's now beginning to get a lot of traffic and Mm. I, I look at the stats growing and I think, oh, this is really exciting, but also a little bit scary. And I think, well, if this had happened five years ago or something like that, it would have freaked me out. Would it? Because you did yeah. actually just mention, like, one of the stumbling blocks, I guess, is the fear of success. Of success. Which is yeah. interesting. Talk a little bit more about that. That's really interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, like therapy now. <laughs> it is therapy. <laughs> um, I think th- this is always why I have... I mean, when I say I've written a novel, novel, obviously I've written a first draft, a second draft, a third draft, Mm -hmm. however many drafts. I think I might be on draft seven now. Um, And and there's something in me that thinks, well, you know, once it's finished, that means I have to then start sending it out and looking for representation um, and publishers and everything. And that, 
that used to scare me that that really did used to scare me and it wasn't until um when i started writing for novelicious and i was writing about food in fiction and i was contacted by a literary agent and taken on as her client and we were putting together a recipe book proposal about food in fiction um and it's only then that i got this kind of self-belief that this is something that i can do um and also this is something i'm prepared for it if it happens i mean as it happened it didn't happen <laughs> so i didn't have to cross that bridge but um i yeah i think with the blogging with instagram with the instagram stories doing things like putting my face on instagram stories doing things talking to camera i've done various youtube videos where i talk to camera doing all these different things trying new things all the time has helped me both with with my confidence and with this fear that one day it might be you know become really successful um is it like a sort of it's it's essentially like you're preparing yourself just yes yeah yes that's interesting that's really interesting yes i think um instagram stories in particular people can be quite frightened to put their mm, face oh just talking and it, it does get easier It does get easier now. I don't really think anything Mm. about it other than thinking, have I got the camera at the right angle so I don't look, you know, with bags under my eyes and back (laughs) tensions or whatever. (laughs) That's all I'm thinking about. But Mm. I I don't really have a massive fear about talking to camera anymore. Mm. Um, But, yeah, I... I I set out deliberately when... um, this recipe book proposal that I was putting together with my agent at the time when I got rejected by the publisher very nice rejections I should say um one of the stumbling blocks I think was the fact that I didn't have a television platform which if you did a recipe book say five ten years ago you needed to be on tv like nigella or jamie or now you just need a blog right exactly now um the the amount of people who've had recipe books from blogs or instagram or anything like that um it is pretty huge and so i deliberately set out to create a platform because i thought well i don't want to be on tv i've got no ambitions to go that way but i do enjoy writing um and i rather like the idea of photography um so that's what i did and that's why it all started that's going back to one of your questions <laughs> some time back but yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you say that actually because on a uh, somebody a friend who um is writing a recipe book a very specialist recipe book about um she's it's she's had a double lung transplant and right. so she now has to eat a very certain way because of her immune system yeah so incredibly incredibly niche and she's published or she's got an agent and a book deal for a recipe book for this specific set of people and her publisher or agent i don't really know which way around it is yeah said get yourself an instagram account and a blog yeah yeah and i was like wow because so she approached me and asked me for a bit of help and advice on it um and i i was like wow okay because they were like you need to have an online presence yeah yeah i i I mean i don't think it's um the only way you can get published nowadays but i do think it can help you if you've got an online platform and you've already got people who are interested in what you create it, it can certainly help with publishers when they when they're looking at you know your proposals or your first three chapters or anything like that it can help them to to think well actually yes this this could this could work as in like these are proven buyers of the book essentially exactly yeah. Exactly. I mean, like I say, you know, I I could name quite a few people who haven't got an online platform, but have still managed to get um, a publishing deal. So it's not imperative. But for me, (laughs) yeah, exactly. But for me personally, it's also helped in develop my writing i mean i'm a completely different writer to what i was 10 years ago um so i i've 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 worked on my writing i've worked on my photography and i've and you know i've become a teller of stories if you like which um 
I, I I didn't think I would be. Really? Um, yeah. You just, and, but you're such a natural. Uh, well, do you know? I, well, I it didn't, feels like you're such a natural on the outside. It, it didn't feel. Um, I didn't think that telling non-fictional stories in a creative way was a thing but it is a thing yeah. this is how naive i was um so yeah it is a thing and it's something i really really enjoy so um and it helps me like i say in all different aspects of um of, of my writing so What's your yeah everything to tell stories about <laughs> the chickens i, like I the do chicken. like to write about the chickens but i also like to let's see if i can explain this i like to con i like to compare it and contrast it with aspects of my own life if that makes sense so um as an example even though there's no chickens in the story so it's not a very good example <laughs> <laughs> but when on my blog i write um a, a few sort of snippets of um stories where i'm sort of looking back in my life and stuff like that so one of them is called working girl so i'm remembering um when i first started working in london and the job i had then and if you know if you remember the the film working girl with yeah. Matthew Matthew Griffith, Griffith, yeah and it was her dream to have an office and to to you know because that meant she'd made it yeah, yeah have the office and the secretary and have the view of new york and everything like that and uh, for a time that was my ambition too but now um i couldn't think of anything worse for me for me personally yeah. than to be in an office every day and it's things like that that i like to bring in the the nature bits and my my change in yeah. circumstances with um with the chickens and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> i love reading I... i love reading stuff like that i love it and yeah. It's, yeah i mean it's super interesting and the way you do it so because you have so many different mediums and platforms to be creative mm. um and like i said at the beginning i, do, I really don't see other many other people doing it in the same way that you're doing it you're quite you're not a sheep at all <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> that's the idea but um but i do think there are there are so many of us that are carving out a, a different way of doing things on the internet um because it is still brand new mm -hmm. and um yeah i think i think it's an exciting place to be as uh, and a scary place to be yeah. but it's an exciting place to be as a creative because you can try and experiment with lots of different things if it doesn't work then you know i i mean i mentioned twitter earlier but i'm not actually a big fan and for someone who writes i don't find it's necessarily the right medium for me to write on i don't know why um i always it's thought shouty. Twitter, yeah maybe <laughs> but even, even when, before it got a really shouty place um i i i thought twitter was for writers and therefore i should be on it but uh -huh. i always felt i was trying to squeeze a square peg into a round hole and yeah it, and that's why i think i love instagram so using the captions on instagram for me is a lot more pleasurable and i i find it easier than <laughs> trying to do the same thing on twitter i yeah i'm with you on that yeah 100 mm -hmm. that's a really good lesson everybody don't try and fit around peg into a square hole yeah. if you don't like the social media that you're using never feel like you should exactly. be using anything just yeah. we've only got limited time in our day don't get sucked into feeling like you need to use it yeah. all yeah. on that note can you let everybody know where they can find you online please Right, I am a bookishbaker dot com as my blog, and I'm a bookish baker on Instagram, Facebook. Though I again love hate relationship with that. <laughs> a bookish baker on Twitter, and I'm Helen Redfern on YouTube. I, I think that's all, all of it. In the show notes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Oh, thank you. It's been really... I, I've been such a fan of season one, oh, so uh, this you. is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to What She Said. 
If you liked this episode or any of the other episodes, then please think about leaving me a rating and a review on iTunes because it really helps get the show out to other awesome creators like you and it's a little bit of an ego boost for me too. (laughs) If you want to connect with me, you can find me over on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, everywhere (laughs) at Wanderloo's blog or just head over to my blog, wanderloos.com, which is also where you can find the show notes for every single episode too. I love hearing what you think about the show, if it's good. And I reply, I try to reply to each and every one of you. Thanks for listening and come back again next week. Yeah.